Newborn babies recognize their mother's voices when they're born, and then they begin recognizing their primary caregiver's voices shortly after birth. As we grow older, many voices become recognizable, even if we don't see the person's face. To prove this point, let's play a little game of whose voice is this? We'll play a clip and you see if you can guess who's speaking. Adjective that uh, I've been saddled with, and particularly in Europe, such a favorite term in Europe is gravitas. I embody gravitas. This was a great time in my life because I was just about to have one of the biggest hits I've ever had. That was the song Jolene. Rude am I in my speech and little blessed with a soft phrase of peace for since these arms of mine. They asked my parents if when I was a little kid did, you know, it seemed like I had a, a strange voice. And my mom, in almost the exact same voice, said, we never knew she had a funny voice. <laughs> Bond. James Bond. So was that harder or easier than you thought? There are some iconic voices that many can recognize almost right away. And we also recognize the voices of our family members, our close friends, our coworkers, and we might even recognize people's voices without knowing their names or never having seen them before because we've heard them so many times. Some voices may bring us joy and comfort and peace. Other voices can cause feelings of terror or dread or annoyance depending on the person. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd, for this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. In our Gospel text, Jesus tells his disciples that he is the Good Shepherd, the one whose voice the sheep recognize the one who lays down his life for the sheep. And then he says he must gather together the other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. When I look at my phone, I often have many notifications from AP News. And most of these breaking news stories are about some sort of division. People being killed or assassinated, fighting between countries, name calling by political figures, 
And I wonder, is this one flock ever going to happen? It seems like a fairy tale or wishful thinking, but there are moments where it seems possible. Moments like the Olympics in Paris where the best athletes in the world are gathered to compete for gold. And while the competition may be fierce, the athletes still support one another, all knowing that it takes a lot to become the best. After the women's rugby sevens medal ceremony, the three meddling teams mingled together. They took a large group picture showing that for that moment they could be one large group celebrating each other's accomplishments. And that made me realize there are so many more moments like that. Moments when we come together for a common goal. Moments when we see each other as fellow human beings. Moments when humanity at its best shines forth. Now Jesus warns of the thieves that try to steal, kill, and destroy. He warns of the hired hands that won't actually defend the sheep from the wolves. The ones who try to tear apart rather than building up. The ones who focus on the negative rather than the good things happening. The ones who try to make something all about them rather than share the spotlight or even step back from the spotlight. And it makes me do some really deep reflecting on times where I've done those things, even if it might not have been really obvious to others. And it totally sucked the enjoyment out of whatever event was happening for me. And it also makes me reflect on leaders that I've served under. Those that I would have followed to the ends of the earth and those who I couldn't wait to get away from. What was it about those leaders that encouraged either loyalty or disdain? Was it what they said, what they did, or how they cared? Were they voices that I wanted to hear over and over again or voices that I totally wanted to tune out? Some of them I can tell you they're voices I never want to hear again. And some of them, they're voices that I would still follow. Now, how about you? I want you to think of leaders in your lives. You know, coaches, bosses, teachers, parents, team captains, or even the untold or unspoken leaders of your friend groups. So what is it about them that makes them either good or poor leaders? Did you recognize their voices enough to know them? to want to follow them, or to hide when you heard them? Did they bring people together or try to create conflict, pitting people against each other? Were they truth tellers, even if the truth was hard to hear at times? Did they build others up without putting others down? Or did they run at the first sign of danger, leaving everyone else behind to deal with the wolves and the thieves at the gate? It also makes me think about Think about God, the God that we serve and follow, and whose voice we hear when we think of God. So is the voice of God for you one that brings division, creates barriers, and does not protect? Or is the voice of God for you one that brings comfort and peace and a place for all? When you've heard God's voice and when you think of God's voice, do you think of a booming voice? or a whisper on the wind, or the still silence? Does the voice of God sound harsh or smooth like butter? Is it cold or warm? And then a bigger question, do we all hear God in a slightly different way? Do we maybe hear God differently depending on whatever situation we're in? You know, if we've messed up and we're being driven to repent, does God's voice sound more stern, like a parent maybe scolding us or trying to teach us? If we're in a pit of deep darkness and depression, is God's voice like a light shining through that darkness? Does God's voice sound like hope and promise or judgment and condemnation to you? 
and to recognize God's voice when you hear it. Because God does speak to us. Now, I can't tell you what God's voice sounds like to you because I'm pretty sure that it's quite different than how it sounds to me. And I can't tell you what you hear when I speak because my speaking voice to me sounds way different than what others hear. And I'm pretty sure the same is true of you also. I also know that it's hard to recognize a voice that's unfamiliar. And the only way to learn a voice is to listen to it and listen for it. Listen for the voice of God. Because Jesus promises us that we will recognize God's voice. Just as he promises us that he will lay down his life for us, his sheep. And anyone else who promises salvation through them is a thief and a liar. Because our salvation comes only through Jesus. And Jesus has already paid the price for us. And now Jesus calls us to listen and to follow him. Jesus will not abandon us, but rather Jesus fights for us. Jesus cares for us. Jesus calls for us. And Jesus is not wanting to separate us. Instead, Jesus came to gather us together as one flock. A flock that can be united despite our differences. These are the promises that we have from God. To be brought together as one people. Loved and protected by the one who has died for us. Let us all listen for the voice of God. The voice of our shepherd the voice that calls to us and promises that he will hear us and that we will recognize him. Amen. So a couple of reflection questions for you to take with you and go deeper into the message. The first is, what are the characteristics of a leader that you want to follow? And the second, do you think that you would recognize God's voice if you heard it?